this, hasn't it? But I'm really excited to see you all. I'm Becky, and as you may have noticed, I'm not in the church building like I usually am. I'm at home, just like you. Can you guess which room of the house I'm in? Hmm, there's cupboards and a bench top and a stove. Have you guessed it? That's right, I'm in the kitchen. What room in your house are you in at the moment? Well, in today's Bible reading, Jesus talks about his father's house. And it's a place with lots of different rooms. And Jesus tells his disciples that he is going to go there to prepare a place for them. Megan's going to come and talk to us a bit about that later. But for now, I think we should play a game. Do you want to play? All right, you're here. You're ready to play. Well, this game involves going to a few different rooms in your house. So I'm going to give you a room and something to get from that room. Then I'll give you a bit of time for you to run and get it. All right? Let's do a practice run first. I need you to go to your kitchen and find me something made out of wood. Are you ready? Off you go! I've got my 
one right here. Awesome work, everyone. Now let's sit down and open our Bibles as Sophie comes to read to us. Thanks, Sophie. Hi, I'm going to be reading John 14, 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. There are many rooms in my father's house. If this were not true, would I have told you that I am going there? Would I have told you that I would prepare a place for you there? If I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father? Don't you believe that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. The Father lives in me. He is the one who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father. Also believe that the Father is in me. Or at least believe what the works I have been doing say about me. What I am about to tell you is true. Anyone who believes in me will do the works I have been doing. In fact, they will do even greater things. That's because I am going to the Father, and I will do anything you ask in my name. Then the Father will receive glory from the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. I will do it. How are you feeling? I wonder if you feel a bit like me. Just a bit sad. I feel sad because I cannot see my friends. I cannot visit them and they cannot visit me. I cannot sit on my couch tonight and watch Survivor with my friend. And we cannot give each other hugs when we need them. I wonder if you have loved ones that you can't see at the moment. It's really sad, isn't it? And it leaves our hearts feeling a bit hurt. Well, today in our story, we hear that Jesus' disciples felt just like we are feeling today. And we're going to see why they felt like this. Our story today is from John chapter 14. Jesus is in a room with his disciples and they are sharing in a Passover meal together. It is a night before Jesus is arrested and before he is betrayed. And so he tells them that he is going to leave them. Well, this makes them sad. Really, really sad. Jesus was their friend. He had been with them. He had lived with them. He had traveled with them. He had loved them for three years. And now he was going to leave them. Can you imagine how they must have felt? Well, Jesus' disciples loved him. And Jesus knew how hard it would be for them to hear the news that he was leaving. So he goes on to tell them that his leaving is actually happy news. Happy news? Well, yes, happy news. Because he was going to prepare a place for them in his father's house. Let me read to you John chapter 14, verse 2. Jesus says this, My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? 
Well, the home that he is talking about here is heaven. And heaven has lots of rooms. Now, when I first heard this, I pictured us eternally roaming around our very own Buckingham Palace or, or Downton Abbey. And then I pictured Jesus going into every room and making the beds and placing a towel at the end with a little baby soap. It's a bit silly, really. But the point is here that heaven has lots of room. Jesus says to his disciples that heaven is the perfect home with room for everyone. And how exactly does Jesus prepare a place for them in his father's room? Well, he goes via the cross. His death for sinners and his rising to new life opens the way to his father's house. It is through Jesus and only through him that their place in heaven is certain and sure. Well, Jesus assures his disciples that he would not be gone for long, that very soon he would open the way and welcome them into his father's house and that they would be there together together with him forever. Little church, let not your hearts be sad because there is a place for you in our Father's house. Little church, let not your hearts be sad for Jesus opened the way for you to be there. Little church, let not your hearts be sad because one day he will take you there and we will be there together with him forever. Bring it on, I say. Thanks, Megan. That made me feel a bit better about being all alone at home. This place is only temporary, but Jesus promises that he's prepared a place in his father's house where we can all be together with him. What an awesome comfort and hope that is. I think we should thank God for this good news. And we're going to do that together now in prayer and then by singing a song. Hi, Little Church. My name's Michelle, and I have the privilege of praying with you guys today. So please get comfy, close your eyes, and pray along with me. Dear God, thank you that you are God and hold the whole world in your hands. Thank you that you are in charge and in control. Please help us to trust in your plans and your goodness, even when we're feeling lonely, frustrated, bored, or scared in lockdowns. Please help us to remember that you are our Father and have made a place for us in your house. Please let that knowledge comfort us this week. Thank you for your son Jesus who is the way, the truth and the life. Thank you that Jesus died for us and rose again so that we may be friends with you. Thank you that you love us even when we don't deserve it. Lord, please comfort everyone at Little Church this week so that their hearts may not be troubled and they will not fear. Help them to remember that Jesus himself is their dwelling place and he loves them dearly and holds them close. May this knowledge strengthen them to love others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, that's all we have time for today, friends. But I hope you had a lovely time with us today. I sure did. I'll see you again next Sunday. Have a great week. Bye.